Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining Spring Pack, the podcast. We have a great show lined up, lots to talk about, so let's get after it. Hey everybody, thanks for joining another episode of Spring Path, the podcast. We have a really exciting episode here for you today. We're going to learn about Southern Connecticut State University and our special guest today joining us from the admissions team, the director of first year admissions is Nilvio Perez. Nilvio, how's it going? Doing well. Thanks for having me, Mike. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Like uh, you and I have known each other for a few years now and it's, uh, it's great to see all the great things you're doing and uh, now being at Southern, what you're accomplishing there. Um, but, you know, to kind of connect you with the, the listeners and viewers at home, I'm just going to put this out there. How did someone who was on track to go pro baseball end up, <laughs> end up in this role? Maybe you can enlighten us because I know you were a pretty good athlete. Yeah, well, um, I hope no one Googles my name to uh, pull up my batting statistics from college. Um, um, that will explain why I'm not playing professional <laughs> baseball right there. there, there. Um, but most certainly college baseball is help propel me into the role that I'm in now. So I'm completely grateful for the opportunity to be a student athlete. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I know um, just because I know you well enough, I know we were talking a little bit about your history, but you know, your path as you were going through college, you know, it was sports, um, which drove it pretty much. And then, you know, leveraging a network, which I want to talk about in a minute, because that's very important and it's key for, for us to get that message out. But um you know, you started with marketing and then I think you started doing tours and you kind of fall, fell into admissions, but it ended up being like the dream job for you, right? Yeah, Mike. I mean, um, I, I can't be more grateful of um, the people who've helped me. So when I, when I was in high school, I'm, I'm first generation college student um, mm -hmm. and I'm first generation American. So my parents, when they came here, told me, you're going to college. You can, we're going to figure out a way to send you to college, but they didn't have the practical experience on what that looked like. So sure. I leaned on my baseball coach. I had an amazing school counselor. I had a couple of teachers and we had a family friend who became my college application going kind of network. They've helped me fill out all the forms, uh, took me to schools to do visits. Um, they really allowed me to be able to afford it with making sure that I had my applications and my scholarships. So um, without them, you know, I wouldn't have been able to go to college or at least, you know, leave home and, and go play sports. Um, and when I got to college, I was, although I was immature in a lot of ways, I was very appreciative and, and grateful of what they did. So I expanded. I, I you know, after uh, my sophomore year, I began giving campus tours to other prospective student athletes. And then I sure. began giving prospective tours to the general um, population and I enjoyed it. Um, and an opportunity presented itself to be an admission counselor there. The university paid for my graduate work. It, and after the first week, I absolutely loved it. Um, took a kid from Brooklyn and sent them to Maine to go visit. And I was just loving it, the travel, the, the ability to help other students in my situation, the ability to kind of uh, uh, be a part of that network on the opposite side. So I took advantage of the network and now I'm giving back by being a part of the network. Um, and I'm starting my 21st year in admissions and I can't believe it's gone that quickly, um, but I'm as enthusiastic about the work that I'm doing now as I was you know, 20 years ago when I first started as an admission counselor. No, and it, it totally comes through. And I mean, you and I have talked about this, like, you know, the the job itself, but the, you know, the network, the helping students, it's really, it's got its, its own, you know, um, gratification because you see it year in and year out as you help more students find their path. So without a doubt, and, and one of the best moments you'll ever have is going to a commencement ceremony and watching, you know, that family celebrate all the work because in many instances it's the family I'm, you know I don't, sure. I don't know Mike you have you have children and I'm, I'm sure you're going to be helping them you know in college through college and after college and and to be able to celebrate that moment as a family and the accomplishment there's nothing like it um and, and to be able to yeah. see you know you know I saw this kid when this person was 16 years old 17 <laughs> years old wide-eyed and and to be the you know the person graduating and going on to career it's there's nothing more gratifying than that when 
um, it's not your child. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely see that. But when it comes to my children, I have a hidden agenda. I need them to take care of me. So that's why I'm, when I get older, so they, they need to go to college and do well. <laughs> yes, good point. Good point, Mike. <laughs> so, so with that, let's let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about let's talk about Southern because there are some unique elements of Southern, and um, one of the key ones uh, key elements is really campus life and where the campus is located. Um, you know, let's let's start in general about like New Haven, uh, New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah, you know, one of the questions I get most often is, you know, you know, what separates you from other institutions, especially uh, institutions in, in in Connecticut. And our location is is such a a benefit to our campus community and our students. Um, New Haven, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, different areas for you to be able to kind of grow, not just as a student or as a person, but professionally and socially as well. So I kind of put them in a couple of different buckets, right? If if you're looking at, well, how do I grow professionally? Well, New Haven is a backdrop to so many different types of industries where you can be a part of an internship. You can work at some of these places. You can start networking, as we talked earlier, with some leaders in the greater uh, New Haven area. And that's why it's one of the best college cities in all of New England with four sure. other colleges and universities like Yale and Albertus. You know, you you have that network where you can go out and really grow professionally. And that's not just in the business industry. I mean, it's it's every discipline. You can grow professionally in the arts. You can grow professionally in the tech world. There's most certainly nonprofits, but you can go into some practical um, like nursing and, and education as well. <clears throat> then you can go socially. I mean, you could just go out and have some great pizza. You can go out and do the pizza tour, like I'd say, and yeah. kind of compare which uh, is your favorite. Um, you can go to the birthplace of the hamburger, right? You can go hang out at Toad's Place and watch some great artists kind of come through. You can do a bunch of these different things socially and kind of have some fun. Um, and not just right here in New Haven, but close to the shore, you have some great parks and walking trails. You can do some winter activities. So it's a really great location to kind of get out and do some things um, as well. And then, of course, you want to grow as a leader. So New Haven has amazing opportunities for students to be able to do that. Um, there's Fortune 500 companies that are close by. There's some of the best nonprofit organizations that started here in New Haven. And then you have you know, some strong political leaders as well. So you can really grow as a leader, grow your communication style, grow how to network with other people. It, it just has all these types of benefits, especially for someone who's finding their way as a college student. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, it, it is. It's like a, it's this melting pot of, um, you know, you have businesses, like you said, tech startups to nonprofits. You have these other schools that are just nearby so it turns it into a college town like you're, you're seeing other students that are from other schools and you can network and hang out but it also has the heritage like you said you have you have toad's place where like all like major musicians came through on their way up and starting up and had and if you go in there you can see the writings on the wall from like elton john and like other it's really cool um but then um you know kind of you know bringing it back around to the whole network element to this you know so what we see in, in many areas is, you know, how do we how do we talk to kids about, you know, how do you be successful in your first year? How do you how do you put yourself out there? And, you know, when it comes to Southern, you have a few you, know, you, you gave me a few examples offline of ways to really join in to clubs and start to leverage them and what they can do for you. Yeah, I, um, I what an important question. Right. Because we, we all are sitting here trying to figure out um you know, what what makes a student successful as opposed to another one uh, not being successful when they start college? And, you know, it, it, it's not really their academic um, GPA coming into 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 college because there are students with high GPAs who, who don't find their way in college. Sure. It's yeah. really we again, we talked about it, it's really networking. It's really trying to be able to connect with the campus community. Some of the things that I would advise and some of the things we do here at Southern, on-campus job employment. Mm -hmm. if, if you can get a job in your first semester on campus, you now have positioned yourself to have a team of advocates in whichever department you're working with. Whether it's faculty or staff, you have people you can go to, whether it's your immediate supervisor or the director of a department, 
who can be your advocate and kind of say, you know, here's the process, here's the purple work you need. Oh, you're struggling in a class. Here's the tutoring service. Let's connect you with all these resources that you might need. The second aspect, and this is national data, if you live on campus, you're more likely to be retained and graduate in a timely fashion compared to someone who doesn't. So if you're able to live on campus, now you've built a larger network with your roommate, your floor mates, an RA who's a upperclassman who's gone through kind of uh, the process sure. the first year students are going to. You have an RD who's a professional who's in the building. So you have all these other people that you can go to for something as small as where do I find my book? You know, or <laughs> what book should I have to something as serious as, oh, my goodness, I do not know how to cite this paper. Where should I go? Right. So so you're 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 having uh, a network on the campus community who can really guide you through that first year. And once you're there, statistically speaking, you're going to graduate on time. Yeah. And that's and that's great for parents to hear as well. <laughs> yep. And the other thing that I would add to that, because, you know, those are very practical, but get involved and go to events. Yes. So when I say yes. when I say get involved, try to join a club or organization. You know, here we have over 130 different clubs and organizations that you can join, but join those clubs and organizations because again, something that you like, something that you're interested in, but they also expand themselves outside of just our college campus. So you can join a sorority fraternity and they're out in the community reading to elementary students, um, working with Habitat for Humanity and building homes, you know, you can join the esports club, play video yes. games, yes. but they also go out and do competitions um, and for scholarship dollars. So you're able to do all these different things. And then, of course, attend events. You usually get free food at the event. So that's a plus, <laughs> right? Get some free pizza, get yep. some, you know, get a cola, you know, get some brownies. The driving do, factor. do some fun things like that. But even more important, stay for the content, because sometimes you can get some great information and great resources from th these different events. You know, you might have a CEO of a big company coming in to talk about, well, how should you interview? Well, if you have a, right. after your pizza, if you have an opportunity to talk to that person for five, 10 minutes, you might set yourself up with a really strong paid internship or even a job offer um, by the end of that evening. So take advantage of those things. Yeah. So, I mean, in essence, just to kind of high level, just look at events and activities as potential opportunities. And if it's the free food that gets you there, great. But, you know, just listen to the content for a little while because it could open up doors. That's that's the whole whole idea. That's why you're there. Yeah. All right. So with that, let's talk a little bit about um, the element that's kind of unique to Southern. You and I have gone into this in detail. So um, we always look at, you know, parents want to know this, students want to know this. Hey, I'm going to college for an education. Uh, I'm paying for this education. And then I want to get into the workforce and kind of follow my path for a career or whatever my dream may be. Um, and Southern does some things that are very unique. So I was hoping you could elaborate on that. We talked about the colleges, the, the two buckets. So I'll, I'll let you run with it. Yeah. So I always put this kind of um, question in two different buckets. Um, the first is bucket is for that student that knows what they want to do. You know, some, some of them know for, since they were five, what I'm going to be as a career, and others have kind of found their way as they got closer to senior year of high school. But we have four colleges here, arts and sciences, business, health and human services, and education. And all of those colleges are set up for students to be able to do internships. We have internship coordinators who are helping our students find those internships. So students shouldn't feel as if they are going to be pressured to do everything on their own. We have professional staff and faculty here who are really guiding that process. Some of those internships are actually built into the curricular because in addition to the degree, some of these majors require students to sit for a license or a certification exam. Sure. And in order to do that, you need to have some kind of practical training prior to that. So we have a really good setup for, for students who are in those colleges. But we also have another bucket. And those are the exploring or undecided bucket. We have a lot of students now who are applying undecided because either they're unsure what they want to do or they have multiple interests. So one of the really great things that we have here is an exploring program and an exploring advising model, which really allows our students to not feel the pressure of having to be in a major because they can be in this program and not delay their graduation 
year. So you can do this for a year and still graduate in four years. And I think that sometimes is a little bit scary when students or even parents are hearing, wait, you're going undeclared. How much longer is this right. going to take you to graduate? Our sure. model is set up where you can do this for a year and still graduate in four years. And the great thing about the exploring um, option is that we have a first year experience um, team here who's meeting with our students. Uh, we have specific classes for our students to be able to meet where they're again, kind of finding their ways. And then we have opportunities for students to set up internships as well, even as, as freshmen, so they can go out and really solidify the careers that they want to do. Yeah, I mean, and when we were talking, that's pretty amazing. And it's it's kind of unique that a student can come in, they can sit down with the, you know, exploring team, I'll call it. Um, but part of that team is looking at internships early on. Like, like you said, hey, someone comes in and says, I want to be, you know, I want to be a graphic designer and or I want to I want to code gaming. You can actually find them an internship to say, hey, why don't you go spend five hours a week? See how it really works um, working at this company. We'll set you up. And then when you come back, tell us, is this what you want to do? And we'll set you on the track to get there. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So um, because many times what I think we've taken from our data, students say, I want to do this career, but they're not sure how to get there. What's the appropriate major? What's the appropriate classes? What skill sets do I need? So to be able to introduce this at a much earlier stage in their college degree life cycle um, has really helped two things. Make sure students aren't changing their majors three, four or five times, and then making sure that they can stay in that four year graduation rate. Um, so those those are the things that we're we're doing to really help our students solidify the program that they want or the and the major that they're um, enrolling in. Yeah, and I'll, I'll share a personal story on that front. I have uh, one of my daughters really wants to be a vet and uh, we were on a farm uh, this past summer and we saw a baby goat being born for the first time. And the sight of it, she was just like, uh, I don't, I don't know, dad. Maybe I just want to, maybe I just want to help dogs or something. <laughs> it was, Small animals, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll start a shelter. I, I don't know. I'm not, <laughs> not sure if that is for me, but no, she's coming back around again. She's, <laughs> but it's exactly that when they, when you say, Hey, this looks really cool. It sounds really cool. Let me get in it and see what happens. And then you're like, mm, maybe this isn't for me. Let's, let's regroup. But yeah that's the kind of stuff that's unique for your program and what you're providing. So, you know, hats off to you. I think it's great. Yeah, no, I think, and uh, no, hats off to you and your daughter for going to see that because it's, you know, you, you don't want to be in your third year of vet school and go, okay, I don't think I want to do this. Right. You know? So, so yeah. So I think um, that's, that's the thing that we're trying to do here at Southern is really, you know, be conscious of, of that, of, you know, we want our students to most certainly enjoy their time here and do well academically but we want them to be able to be prepared to go into the workforce um, and um, have some transferable skills. You know, sure. I think the generation that's coming behind ours, they're going to have multiple type of careers. So to be able to, you know, work in tech, but then also be able to do other things, I think is very important as well. And I think the exploring model that we have here allows students to have that confidence. All right. Nilvio. This is great. I, I, I thought all this content was phenomenal. And uh, there is one other element I wanted to get out in front of. And um, that is the more recent push and the promotion that Southern's been campaigning on around social justice. And I know it's, um, it's something that some schools are doing, but I would like to know what it means to you and what the push is for. Yeah. So uh, great question, Mike. So yeah, so we're, you know, we're, we're striving to, to have um, uh, be a social justice institution. And I think um, many people hear that and they're not sure what it means. Um, it, it's it's more than just being civil, right? We want everyone to be kind to each other, of course. But it's it's having a lens of, you know, how can we be a little bit more inclusive? How can we make sure that we're, we're being equitable, um, that our um, students who identify themselves as male and female have the same access, things of that kind of nature? Sure. Um, I, I'll, I'll give you a quick story. Um, you know, we've, we've had some students who are, are in wheelchairs, and um, uh, we have an intramural sports program where students can play club sports or intramural sports. And we didn't have anything for our students who were um, wheel wheelchair bound. And this past summer, we, we, we announced that we're having an adaptive sports program where students sure. can actually be able to do club sport or intramural sports playing wheelchair basketball. You know, that to us is 
what social justice means. It's not it's not just looking at one area, but you know how can we make sure all of our students um, feel that this is the campus for them and that we're providing access and equity for everyone here. Um, and of course, there's practical aspects of being able to just communicate with all people from all different walks of life as well. But that's that's the, the vision that we have here is if you come here as a student, you're going to feel welcomed. And if there's something that seems like a barrier to you, we're going to do what it takes to make sure that we can remove those barriers so that you can have the same opportunities that any other student might be afforded. No, I think that's fantastic. And, it, and it's honestly, it's nothing but positive. And I appreciate you sharing and uh, giving some clarity on that. Yeah, so no, wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's um, it, I think it, I think the students that come here know that and appreciate that. And um, I think we're very student centered around that. So, Mike, thank you for for bringing that up. Yeah, no. And, and hey, Dovia, thank you for being on the show. This has been great. It's extremely informative. And uh, as we wrap up here, um, where should how do people get in contact with you? Where should they go to find out information on the school? Should they just go to the to the website? Yeah. Yeah. If you go to southernct.edu. Uh, that's our uh, website. So you can go there and, and kind of find any information that you're looking for. And of course, um, if you just search for me, Nilvia Perez, um, you can also you're email me as well. Yeah. And we'll put we'll put the uh, the link below. And then if they wanted to email you directly, what's your email address? Yep. So my email is Perez in 18 at southernct.edu. So that's P E R E Z N. 1-8 at southernct.edu. Perfect. And we'll drop that in the description as well. So please, everyone, check out Southern's website. Reach out to Nilvio. Put him to work for you because he's happy to talk to you. And then, uh, as always, you can always go to springpath.net and see if Southern Connecticut State University is a match for you. Nilvio, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk soon.